Go. All right, here we go, everybody. Welcome to today's presentation to everyone in the future. Let me pull up our participation panel just so I can sort of see everyone filtering in. And if you can help me out, Dan, how many people do we have while I pull this up? I am. Looks like we've got, uh, looks like we got two folks that are coming in right now. Yo. Welcome to today's webinar, everybody. <clears throat> We'll just give everyone about a minute or so before we launch into today's presentation. I'm really excited for what we've got planned for today because it's something that it affects anyone, everyone, everyone with, an, uh, with a visual impairment. <clears throat> it's a productivity app and it's going to enhance all of your lives if you have not used it in one way or another because it's so multifaceted. But again, let's wait about 30 to 45 seconds more in order to get plenty of people to launch this off. Okay, we got a good chunk of folks, four folks. Well, we'll start off by presenting today's panel. Today, our presenters will be as We have, and he is the adaptive tech instructor here at the Lighthouse. Hey, Aaron. Hello. We have Bailey Alger, who is also an adaptive tech instructor. Hello, Bailey. Hello. And there's me, Eric C. Fuentes. I am, not, I am also an adaptive tech instructor here at the Travis Association for the Blind. And we have Dan Hart, who will be screening your questions and hands and jumping in with some uh, other commentary as the presentation rolls on. Of course, he's our data and accessibility guy, our number cruncher, our guy for all the numbers. <clears throat> Hello. So, before we get started, I want to also let everyone know how to join us throughout the duration of this presentation. If you wish to speak to us with your voice box, your voice, you can do so by raising your hand. This can be achieved by cording Alt plus Y on your Windows or Command plus Y if you are a Mac user. On your cellular, on your telephone device, it would be star nine. That will raise your hand and we can aggregate you to the conversation if you're shy and please don't be because we are not and we will be more than happy to engage you with voice. But if you can't talk for whatever reason, kids are asleep, hey, no problem. You can chat us into the chat field. This can be achieved by courting Alt plus H on Windows and Command plus H on your Macintosh. Actually, it's not a Macintosh, I, I think. <laughs> well, on your Macs, everybody. So without further ado, let's get started. And today we're talking about something that is really close, near and dear to my heart as a blind person. Uh, something that has taken me from both a productivity at home person and a from a, a professional level to heights that are beyond my imagination or were beyond my imagination at the time. It's an app called Seeing AI, Seeing Artificial Intelligence. And it is a massively powerful productivity app geared towards for the blind, visually impaired, high, uh, your, your mid partials, low partials, your high partials could probably benefit off of it. And what it does, it, it uses your iPhone, your iPhone's camera, to bring you a ton of different pieces of information all in one package. I'm not selling it to you because I can't sell to you what's free. It's completely free. It's by Microsoft. It's got the powerful engine and development power of Microsoft behind it. And it's something that's very, very new uh, mainstream company uh, producing something that is just geared towards a particular uh, disabled group, in this case, that being the blind. But before I we go into it, let me just explain to you what it does. The app consists of various channels. Each a channel is a different function or aspect of the app. It can perform various things using the camera, artificial intelligence off of the Microsoft servers. So you will need a constant internet connection. So data, for example, will suffice or your Wi-Fi connection. It uses this information that it gathers through your camera 
sends it to the server and then sends it back to you as text. For example, I can read a product code using my phone on a, on a bar barcode on a piece of product. For example, this water bottle that I have, I know it's a water bottle, but I can also distinguish what brand it is. Uh, I have a few other products. I don't know what this is. I just grabbed it. I, I went grocery shopping and I can't, this is either aluminum foil or toothpaste and we will find out later in today's presentation. But using these servers, using these, uh, these resources that Microsoft has provided us, we can do things like that. We can read currency. We can read short text real time. We can capture documents, take photos of documents and capture them. We can even do things like recording uh, people's faces and giving them names. So next time you point your phone at someone's face, it's gonna tell you who you're looking at by the name you assign to them. You can view scene previews. You can point your camera at a room and the phone will tell you what's going on. Applications like Twitter have integrated the use of seeing AI and we'll talk a little bit about later and how that, how that affects you. But before, and well, first of all, but I just want to tell you guys, these, this is big. This is really big as a blind person. The app itself isn't relatively old. It's only about five years old. It started off as a very alpha beta project that Microsoft was sort of kicking out there, uh, workshopping for the blind. And now it's something that's blossomed into a thing that can be used both at home and professionally to enhance it and increase efficiency. And before we get started, I want to kick it over to Aaron he is going to show us how to get the app and how to set it up and get that ready uh, for you. So take it away, Aaron. Thank you, Eric. Hello, tonight I would like to demonstrate how to install, how to find Seeing AI if you're using an Apple iPhone. I've got an Apple iPhone 8 here with <clears throat> VoiceOver and I will start it up. I'm on my home screen and I'll go to the App Store. In the App Store, I'm App going store. to look for search. search. Apps. Search field. Search field. Is editing. I'm going to type Games. in Seeing Apps. AI. S double E I N G space AI, and I'll hit search. Now it'll search for me. I'll go through the results. Now this button would say install or get if you hadn't taken it. But luckily I've downloaded it, so it's already installed and it's ready to go. And we will launch it right now by double clicking open. open. So here, A. Doc, quick help. when you first launch the program, App. you will have a tutorial. It will have a very lengthy orientation to guide you through the steps to set up and just to give you a general overview of the program. And each program short here, text. for example, short text is one of the channels or functions in seeing AI. And I'll go to the back button here. And now if you, if you slide, slide down near the bottom, you will find channels. And this is adjustable. You can use the up or down swipe. And you can move to different functions. For example, I'll go up, I'll swipe up. Document. Document. Product. Product. Person. Person. And then I'll go back. Product. Document. Short text. So it's very easy to navigate and find just what functions you're looking for. And for example, you just heard the first short one text. here is short text. And I believe Eric is going Document. to tell us more about short text. Oh, sorry. Hello, everybody. Oh, I apologize for that, everybody. I was actually finding my phone. That was not a call. I was finding my phone because I misplaced it. And that's another piece of technology that we should talk about later. I told my smart speaker to find my phone and it found it. So I apologize for that little uh, delay. But today we're going to look at the short text channel on Seeing AI. And the cool thing about this channel is that most apps nowadays require you to read something or to snap a picture of something, and then it'll have you read it. I mean, it extends to 
other applications, you know, hey, you can take a picture of this and then we can tell you what it is. Same with scanners that hook up to your computer. Well, you need to scan the document before you can read it. Seeing AI sort of says, hey, forget all of that. We're going to go ahead and allow you to read things real time. You can point at the camera at a piece of paper or the screen, and it will tell you what it says. Now, it's not the same as taking a picture because you do have to angle your phone and move your phone around. But for example, let's say you're trying to read a piece of mail, or let's say your computer is acting up. Your computer isn't talking to you. JAWS isn't working. Narrator won't start. Oh, gee willikers, what do I do, right? All right, so let's start by pointing my phone at my computer. I'll open Seeing AI with Siri. Open Seeing AI. <clears throat> and now, well, I'll turn the speed down for you guys. Now I'm going to point the phone at my computer. Let's see what it says. Let's see. I'll lean it back a little bit. And it's, it's reading to me the screen on Zoom. It's saying raise hand, Dan Hart. It looks like gibberish, but it's not meant to make a ton of sense. It's just meant to give you a general idea of, hey, this is what the screen looks like right now. If my computer was having an error, this would read something like error 10111. And then I could say, okay, there's clearly something wrong here. Something's amiss. Time to give it a gander and see what's going on with another thing like uh, taking a picture for, of it. Now we can get some more details about it or moving the phone left and right up and down further away from the screen. It's all about angling. For example, on this computer, I'm holding my phone about uh, two feet away from the screen, right directly in front of my face. So it's reading to me, sort of, when it feels like it. <laughs> Sometimes you try to duplicate something and it won't work. Let's see. Well, it did read it, that's the, that's the point. But one other thing that I wanted to show you was how you can find pieces of mail and read the envelope if there's actual text on the envelope. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a random piece of envelope with mail inside and let's see what this says. So I'm just pointing the phone all over the envelope. Let's see if it says anything. So I'm laying it down on the table on one side and now I'm pointing, I'm hovering the phone or holding the phone about a foot over the envelope itself and I'm moving it about. Let's see if it says anything. Come on, don't fail me now. Let's see. Adjustable. Short text, document, short text. All right, short text, let's see. Let's flip it over. Clearly there's nothing here on this side, so it must be on the other side. It's an envelope, so hopefully something's on here. <laughs> Let's see, not the greatest demonstrate. It works, so believe me, you, it works. By G. Willikers, it works. Okay, so maybe this envelope's just blank or the text on it's faded. Again, guys, it's, it's a very practical science, right? The, it's a robot, it doesn't have the ability, or it's, it's AI, it doesn't have the ability to go, hey, I think that text makes somewhat sense. If the text is whatsoever splotted out or uh, if, it's a, if it's dim in your room, for example, so maybe turn the lights on or if there's too much lights, you might have some issues. So you'll have to play with it. But here, let's try this. I'm gonna open up a folder with some documents inside and let's see what these documents say. Now, it's nothing terribly important. I really don't remember what it was. So let's see what it says. Let's see what this document say. Carriage CVT. Texas workforce. OA. Exas. Vocational. W or Sessions. Interagency solutions. Tense workforce commission. Vocational. Exas. Sessions. Interagency I examine that one rep. Patents name. Been scheduled at 1.45 p.m. Ask or great. Okay. So this is something that was sent to me from Texas Workforce Commission. Obviously, I was scheduled for 1.45. I don't have any other information about this, but it's a multiple page document. If I turn from page to page, I could figure out more things about it. But the thing I'm trying to get at right now isn't that you can read whole menus with this or that you can read a whole piece of mail with this channel, short text. It's that you can discern what you're looking at based, based on what the phone says. You say, all right, this is a piece of, 
of mail for Eric C. Fuentes. It's from TWC, Texas Workforce Commission, and it involves an appointment at 145. For more, oh, one last thing I wanted to show you. You don't have to settle for English. This app is available in so many languages. So to do that, from the initial short text channel, let's swipe to the left. Recognizing English button. You hear a gray me. circle with white text on a white background. Recognizing English. Double tap on that. A gray circle with does. Ah, ah. Return to Siri. Cellular channel. Recognizing English. Recognizing English. English. So we tapped on that. And let's see what languages are available. Dutch. 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 Espanol. Espanol. So Espanol. you have Espanol for anyone who speaks Spanish. I know there's quite a few of us. If you have someone who's a majoritively a Spanish speaker, Espanol is available and it's completely fluent. Français. France, Italian. Italian, various other more. It isn't also, it also it's not limited because I know in, at the Lighthouse at least we have a few Vietnamese speakers. Let's see, I don't think this can speak Vietnamese but they just added Brazilian Portuguese today. I mean, that's insane, right? So they can also read other scripts so you're not you're not limited to the Roman Latin alphabet whatsoever. But to expand sort of on what I've shown you, I'm going to toss it back over to Aaron. He's going to show you how to get more out of your text with your document capture channel. Take it away, Aaron. Thank you, Eric. You were mentioning about looking at envelopes, and obviously envelopes will contain letters. And letters are very important. They'll have lots of information for us. And we can use the other channel here, our document our document channel to scan a document, for example, a letter. So I have a letter here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the phone above the piece of paper. I'm going to hold it above. And it's going to tell me, hey, uh, the left edge is not in sight or the top edge is not in sight, meaning it's going to align it for me just by holding the camera. And it'll say, hold still. And then I'll be able to wait a second. It'll take a picture for me. And then it will perform its computer magic and it will give out a short reading window for me. It's an edit window, just like you'll flick left and right to find previous line, next line. And it will read what it's found for me. So let's give it a shot. So I have an envelope here and I will try and align it here. Hold steady. Hold steady. Processing. Cancel. Button. Okay. Back. Button. So that was very quick. It found the image for me, it said hold steady. So I knew, okay, this is in frame. So then boom, 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 and it's doing its magic. And now we have the back button. So I'll swipe right here. Scan result. Travis Association for the Blind. PO Box 3, Travis Association for the Blind. Perfect. It's found this envelope with no problems. And you can also do letters inside the letters. So I will take another example here of a letter. And sometimes it will get confused if there are any handwriting or markers on there. So I'll go to the back button and I'll try it one more time. Processing. Processing. No text recognized. So in this case, you will have some problems if you encounter text that has, in my example, I can see some big thick black marker on the bottom. So if there's black marker or handwriting, it will get very confused. But luckily, I'll be back later to show you about the handwriting channel, which can help you with reading print, not cursive, but reading print uh, handwriting. So in addition to scanning paper letters, it can also help you very much with scanning things around the house, like let's say product labels or UBC codes. And here's Eric to tell us about that. Thanks, Aaron. This one's awesome. This one was so much fun when I got seeing AI first. It was really wonky at first because the camera, uh, for people who are, or for anyone really, the uh, the camera, the witness of the, the wide the lens. <laughs> I'm so excited I can't talk. The camera was just not getting a wide enough view of the product. But now seeing AI has worked with Apple to fix that. And now you can uh, pull products from their millions of databases. Now, it won't work with everything. Things like local grocery store barcodes won't be on there most times, unfortunately. So sometimes hill country work, but it 
might. So let's get to the channel for products. So from, uh, let's see, actually I closed Seeing AI because also one other reason you should uh, avoid having Seeing AI open in the background for a long period of time is it does drain battery because it's one, it's using your camera all the time. It's, using, it's got your flash on. Two, it's communicating with Microsoft the whole time, right? So if you're over data, it's even eating, it's a nom nom nomming on your data way more than, than it would on Wi-Fi. But nevertheless, uh, it's a small price to pay. <laughs> so let's open my Seeing AI. Seeing AI. Yes. A hey, quick question for you. We had a question about uh, what does it mean when the app says uh, no edge is visible back on the last topic? Oh, cool. So the phone, the app itself is helping you uh, orient your phone over the page. So let's say it says no edge is visible. That means your, fo your, your, your phone is saying or your, the app is saying, hey, I really can't tell there's a page there. Sometimes, and I don't know if Aaron wants to hop on here, it'll say something like, top left edge not visible that tells you hey i need to angle my phone a little bit more uh downwards you know away from the top so i can see the top of the page if it says left side not visible you'd angle your way to the right is that right aaron that's correct derek i can give awesome. a quick example here in the document and it will say things when i get too close to the document no oh, picked it up cancel <laughs> A bit too good. <laughs> yes, but it will find. Oh, it can't. Can't find. So it's trying to find an edge. It can't find an edge, and it's getting confused. It can't. Left edge not visible. So it's trying to center the document, but it can't find it because the phone is either too close or too far away, and it's trying to find that edge so it can line it up and get the best OCR results for you. And that's really cool because there's you don't have to take the picture yourself. The phone's going to go center it. So that means hold it steady. And then it's going to snap the photo and try to get you the best OCR possible. So that's pretty cool. And same goes for this product thing. So here I've got an assortment of things from all over my household. So let's start by showing you something flat. Here's a flat box I pulled out of my freezer a couple of minutes ago. And I want to know what it is, because I, I honestly, I truly don't know what it is. So the way we do this is the same as short text. We hold our phone over the product. In this case, we're messing with three dimensions. So we might have to look at edges, top, bottom, right, left. So we'll start with one side. This is a flat box, a flat rectangular box. So let's hover the phone over the box. Let's see if we can get a barcode. Beep, beep, beep. And you'll know when the barcode is near because the phone will give you auditory indications of, hey, I see a barcode and it does not see one yet. So let's see if it sees one now on this side. Yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, it would help if I was on the right channel. There we go. Now I'm on product. All right. Let's see if it sees our barcode, barcode, barcode. I'm hovering it over, just sort of playing. Uh, Sort of playing air drums over my phone, but sideways. Oh, okay, let's see. Over the box, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'll move the box. So I'm turning the box just while it's flat. I'm turning it sideways. I'm turning it the other way, trying to get the best possible angle on this barcode. Because I heard a little poop, and it, that's when you know you're getting close to the barcode when your phone gives you an auditory indication, like if I can get this to work, it'll, I'll show you how you know you'll be getting close to a barcode. Let's see here. It is a work in progress, folks. This is not something that's gonna make you, you know, uh, just as fast as a sighted person, right? They can just look at something, but it negates the need for a sighted person uh, to be in your household. Oh, there we go, I think. Also the barcode, this has been sitting in my freezer for a while. So the barcode could have been smudged out by, by water or by mo uh, moisture. So let's move on to something that's dry, like this can. I pulled this can out from my dry goods can, can, uh, counter. So in this case, we have a circular can. Usually on circular cans, we have the barcode somewhere on the circle. So we slow, low, slowly turn the can, slowly turn the can, very slowly. 
nice and slowly turn the can while we hover our phone over our, let's see, over our can. Oh, okay. Here. <laughs> so let's see. And it, it does take some practice. Even I have trouble with it, as you can tell. <laughs> so I'm going to look at the tops of the can. And I don't know if Aaron, you can find something that definitely has a barcode on it to show it off. If you can scramble and go ahead and grab something while I flounder about here trying to find me a barcode. But it, it does seem to be trying to find something as it's beeping at me. Again, it's not perfect. See, it's going boop. But the way it works is the closer it gets to the barcode, the faster those beeps will get. So it'll start by going boop, 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 boop. And the closer you get, it will go brrrr. So it'll make faster and faster tones. Oh, it just found it. <laughs> Hungry man boneless fried chicken. Hungry man. Okay, so I accidentally put it over the box and it was Hungry Man boneless fried chicken. A TV dinner. I don't eat those anymore. So it's been a while since I purchased this. Let's see if we can replicate this again. Close. I'll get the box. And it just happened by I can I know that the bone man, the TV dinner is not in this can, but I know that it's in this box because it makes more logical sense. So it's a combination of AI and logic on my behalf. So let's see if I can duplicate what I just did. Oh, let's see. Let's see, let's see. Oh. Going pee -pee. Oh, there we go. More info. Not recognized. And of course, it would say not recognized. Again, it's an exact science, folks. It requires precision and accuracy. So it found it first, then it I found it again, and it said not recognized. That doesn't mean that it's not in its database. That means maybe it got a number wrong because it's AI. It's guessing what it says. So this moisture on the box could be making numbers look different sometimes. Let me do it one last time before I move on to my final product to show. But we did get it to work once, once. And I wanted to get it to work. Oh, let's see. Processing. Not recognized. Close. Darn. And it, I would recommend guys do this several times. It might work. It might not work. Here's one more round product. It's a bottle of something. Oh. Craft real mail. Craft real mail. That was quick. Again, it was a round bottle can of something. Jar, a plastic jar, because I buy my mayonnaise in jars of plastic instead of the glass ones. Um, they're a little cheaper, I think. <laughs> so it told me craft real mayo. And because this is a bigger brand, craft, I can get more info about the product by swiping to more info. Share, button, more info, button, play, button. And then I can button. play. Refrigerate after craft real mail. Heading left. Refrigerate after opening. Do not freeze. Play button. There you go. Now you know. Hey, refrigerate mail after you open it. Don't freeze it. Craft real mail. All right. Back. One last thing. Back. I talked about this bottle of water, so I owe it to you guys to show you or to find out with me what brand this is. Close. Just cause. All right. We can do it. Button. So it's a bottle of water, but let's find out the brand. So I'm going to turn it around. Around and around it goes around the iPhone and it might not have a barcode. Let's see. Nice and slow. Oh, it does have a barcode. Can I get it? Can I get it? Can I get it? Can I get it? <laughs> it can be frustrating folks. Don't, don't drop it. If it's, if it's having trouble, I mean, it will find things for you. That's the awesome thing about this app is wow, it's always getting better. It's always improving and it's got Microsoft behind it. Uh, Aaron, did you manage to find any product or do you have any products readily available to show off one more thing? I do indeed, Eric. So I'm on the product channel and I will hold a small box. I will hold a small box in front of me and you will hear a hovering like a an old zither sound. And that means it's found something and you're trying to center and get that zither sound uh, centered in your earphones. And that is, it's found a code and it wants to scan that code. So I'm going to hold up this box and we're going to find out what it is. Oh, found it already. <laughs> it found it already. So I'll do it one more time quick. Okay, so now I'm back. I'm going to hold this box and then I'm going to Hold near the center. 
And the golden is center. There we go. Your beef flavor bouillon, three dot ten os. Beef bouillon for my lovely stew this weekend. And that's awesome. So it obviously works, guys. Aaron's got better uh, better centering capabilities than I do, it seems, but it works. It takes practice. Let me just try one last time with this can, with this bottle of water, because I want to know what, darn it, I want to know what bottle I'm drinking. Let's see, one last time. Hey, no. Eric, we got a quick question too, yes. while, you're, while you're working on that. Uh, questions asking, uh, did you have to do something uh, to make Seeing AI give you more information than just the name of the product? Yes, so good question. After the product is scanned, it brings you up into a screen that has the basic name of the product. And then if you swipe to the right or tap on the bottom right, there's a more info button. If there is more info, you will be able to push it. If there's no extra info to be offered, it will just be dimmed. So you won't be able to press it. If you touch it, nothing happens. So that's how you do it. One Thank last, uh, got another question that just okay. came in. Uh, I understand that the short text can speak different languages, but can the main language of the app be changed? So the, actually, that's a very good question. The app yes, it can. I'm yes, sorry to jump in. It can be changed. If you are using your settings and you change the language of the iPhone, if the language is supported, it will be read out. The UI will be read out in that language. Yep. We've got Spanish, we've got Portuguese. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your voiceover, for example, if you have your voiceover to output in two languages using the rotor, like when I, ha I have English and Spanish, like, Words, like so. Settings, screen with language. Espanol, Mexico. English, US, default. I got English, US, and Spanish. If I change seeing AI to Spanish, I can then set my voiceover Espanol, to Spanish and it will read to me the things in Spanish. English, US. So it's multifaceted for sure. Also, this uh, bottle of water has officially won. Let's move on to currency. And this one is by far the most accurate, and uh, I say that now, so hopefully, the most accurate and efficient channel on this application. I have one piece of currency right here. I don't know what it is. It's been sitting in my wallet for a good year now. So let's figure it out together. Channel, product, product. Person. person, currency. currency. I'm just swiping up from in that channel slider. Now I'm going to put this bill over a flat surface and start hovering my phone over the bill. Ten U.S. dollars. Boom! That's what I'm talking about. That's efficiency. No more getting, uh, no more getting uh, ripped off at the store. If that ever happened to you, I hope it has not. Now you can whip this out and go. Let me see what this change says. Unfortunately, it can't do coins, but there's uh, coins are in America at least. I'm sure in other countries. Uh, you can tell based on feel, uh, the dollars are a different, the bills are a different story, of course, but you can view the currency you're looking at by hovering the phone over the bill. And it's pretty quick, as you can see, I mean, I, I hovered the phone for like half a second over my bill and it's at 10 US dollars. Speaking of currency, this also is multifaceted, just like language, you can just swipe to the left from the channel Recognizing US dollars. Click on recognizing US change. dollars. Select the currency you wish to recognize. Brazilian real. Brazilian real. And you can change your currency to different things. We have Brazilian real. British pounds. British pounds. Canadian dollars. Canadian dollars. Euros. Euros. Indian rupees. Indian rupees. Japanese yen. Japanese yen. Turkish. Turkish. Selected. U U Selected. US. U Actually, I thought Mexican pesos. Let's see. Japanese Let's go back Indian. a little bit. Canadian. Select the currency you ah, select darn. Currency. Matt, Unfortunately, Matt. Mexican pesos are not in here, but there's still a wide diverse portfolio. If you travel to the UK or Canada, you can set this to Canadian dollars or pounds and you're good. You're good. It's going to read it to you. And that is awesome. And you know what else is awesome? Being able to look at rooms and people and knowing having a general idea of what they look like, who they are, and what your surroundings look like. And for that, let's kick it back over to Aaron. Thank you, Eric. One of the most exciting features about AI is learning to recognize just groups of data and being able to give faces to it, so to speak. So seeing AI has a fantastic feature for recognizing faces and scene preview. Uh, I have here one of the channels, it's person. Adjustable. And person here, it uses your camera and we're going to 
left swipe camera. back. Face recognition. I'm going to select face recognition. What this will do is it'll activate my front camera. It will get a picture of me, then the screen will crack, and it will tell me one person about blank feet away. So we'll try this. One face near center, two feet away. Okay, it's telling me there's one face near center. Now there's some very exciting options in here if we swipe right. Quick help. Button. Switch to back. Take picture. Button. Zero slash three. Zero slash take picture. Take a Button. picture here for if you're centering on for let's say a selfie or you need to get something in frame. This will help you do it for taking pictures. You know, sending to friends. So we'll go back. One thing. Close. Button. Okay. Tap that to teach Z and I to read. Oh, there it is. Tap that to teach Z and I to recognize a new person. Heading. And here, after I've saved my, my went back for my photo, it's had a still of the photo. And one of the cool things is Tap that to teach Z and I to recognize a new person. We can find the add button. Add. Recog add button. And this will save that face. It will save the features and it will say, oh, there's the instructor. Okay. And the next time you use this face recognition, the person recognition, it will say, instead of one face, it will say instructor's face. So it will keep, it's very exciting if you develop a library of faces and you can have, let's say a virtual uh, meeting with somebody having your camera and you could say, oh, that's you, Bill. I see you on the screen there. Well, how did you do that? Well, are you saying I have, see? So the next thing we'd like to look at now is the scene preview. And that's a very exciting feature, which allows us to take a picture of something for example, in my room here, and it will describe things around us. And we can actually use our finger, just like we're dragging on the screen to voice over reading it for us. It will tell us where things are in position to where the camera picture was taken. So I will go back. back. Zero faces. Channel. And we Person. will go Adjustable. to Product. the scene. Currency. scene. Preview. So scene, this will allow us to take a picture. So I will point it in a direction. Take I'll take a picture. Now it's going to recognize something on the screen. It may not be 100% accurate, but it will give an example. And then we will take it. Take picture. Processing. Probably a black object on a bed. So here, for example, I had to put it toward my bed and I had a pair of headphones on it. So it says, hmm, there's a bed. I know that because I've seen lots of beds. Then there's something black hmm, because I can tell with color scanning. So probably you will get things like most likely, probably, could be. And it's trying to make its best guess. And there are some other options. Save photo. For example, you can save the photo. Share. Button. You can share this. For example, if you take a picture of a scene, you can share it. If the scene is correct, you can share it with people on Facebook and whatnot. And now explore photo. we can Button. explore the photo. So explore we'll, the elements within the photo. What that means is we had two objects here, the bed and the black object. So I'm holding the camera in the same place where I took the picture. And now I'm gonna drag the my finger around and it's gonna find, oh, beep, there is the bed. And then I'll drag it around and beep, there's the black object. So let's try it. Cancel, button, two items detected. Two items Hotel. detected. Button. So I'm gonna drag my finger around. It's gonna play an angelic choir noise. And when I hit something, it'll beep at me. Two items detect infant bed. Bed. I'm not an infant, sir. Madam. Infant bed. Chair. Chair. Infant bed. Infant bed. Chair. Okay. Infant bed. So I'm dragging my finger around. Chair. So there when it beeps, it's, oh, that's that's where it was in the photo when you took it. So if you have two people, for example, you hover your uh, finger on the left-hand side of the screen. Oh, there's one person there. Then you hover to the right side. Oh, that person is standing to the left of them. It's very cool to get this spatial information. It's very exciting. And we also have capabilities for descriptions in the photo roll. So if you have a camera full of pictures, you can also use a lot of this exciting technology and Bailey is here to tell us about it. Hello. Um, so what I'm going to show to you today is um, it's not a channel, actually. Um, you can get to this from any channel, though. Um, you'll be looking for the menu button, which is if you keep swiping left and you hit the edge, you're going to find the menu. Um, so this particular feature is useful. So let's say someone sends you a picture because 
you you know you know how that works we're we're blind we still get pictures from people because they just kind of forget and you want to get an idea of what's in it um, especially if it has text in it you can go here and um, look at the photo and it will take a moment it'll play that oh so famous jingle and it will give you a sort of description of what the photo is and it will say text is there and then it will let you actually read what the text says. So I'm going to show you that right now with a um, with a menu. Oh, I'm in the short text menu and it's giving me all the computer screen stuff. Um, so I'm going to show you this from a coffee house menu. Photos We're going to go to browse photos. Photo, photo, screen, a screenshot, graphical user interface. And Quick when the first time you find a photo in here, it's going to say photo. User but Quick help. once it sort of gets the, um, once it takes a description of it for the first time, it'll sort of save that photo in the app with that name. So I've already taken a look at this. So it says um, graphical user interface as the title. But let's graphical take a let's interface. take a second and go in. Here. Expand button. Text. Expand. Um, so for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to click reanalyze photo so you can sort of get a so you can sort of get a first time uh, look at this. Uh, you can do this from any time, anytime you. Um, open a photo and you think that uh, it's not quite getting everything and you want Microsoft to give it a retry, you can click, uh, click reanalyze and it will rerun the photo through its checkers. So let's do that. Button. Processing, cancel button. So it took a little bit longer because it's seven, quite seven, the large um, photo. Uh, let's take a look here. If it, there we go. Oh, this is odd. Okay, so here we go. It's moving me all over the place. So it says scene. The scene is this graphical user interface. That's its description. And then to the right of that, there's text. Text. Yield Verizon LTE 12, 39 at 1948%. So that's the status bar of the phone. GF protein box, $4.95 cheese cubes, grapes, GF crackers, boiled EGG. And it has all of that stuff from the menu right there in a way you can read it. So if you're going to go out to dinner with someone and you want to know what the menu is ahead of time, they could send you a screenshot of it and you could take a look at, at the, um, take a look at the photo and see sort of what, um, what options you have. Again, it's not perfect. And it is important to note that you cannot do this with videos, only pictures. But another thing that's cool about this is you can also do that um, explore photo thing here. Obviously, right now it's going to be a little bit more crowded because it's a menu um, with little icons on it. But Delete, explore, photo, for the sake of demonstration, let's take a look. Processing. 56 items detected. Yep, see, 56 Move items to as opposed to two of them. So here, let's get a look. Oh, served with chips. Oh, vegetarian GF. Hide text blocks button. Quick help button. Oh, and you, yep, and you can hide those text blocks just to get a look at the icons if you really wanted to. But again, it's a much more crowded uh, sort of screen, especially when you're using something with text. But um, you could, if someone sent you a picture of, I don't know, if a family member just had a new baby or something and you wanted to explore that sort of picture, you could do that. Um, so now, um, we've taken you through a lot of the major things um, seeing AI can offer. I'm going to pass it back over to Aaron because he's going to start us in on um, our little miscellaneous section and talk to you about that handwriting he mentioned a little bit earlier. Uh, Aaron? Thank you, Bailey. 
I have a piece of paper here, and it contains the bane of our existence. Some of us still remember writing cursive if we were a little partial. Nowadays, that's a thing of the past, but sometimes we will still encounter handwriting on a piece of paper. And try as we may, some fonts, some computer fonts are not very friendly. Even if you're scanning a document, it can't be read, and handwriting is all the more difficult to read. So what I will do is I will go to our handwriting scene. And our scene here is handwriting. This does print, uh, Latin al alphabet, French, uh, figs, French, Italian, English, German, Spanish. And it does capital letters, it does small letters. It tries cursive, but it fails miserably. I'll give you a great example here. I have a piece of handwriting with middle John Hancock and some writing on here. So I'm going to place this on the, the camera on the page, just like we did for our document scan, for our short text scan, and it will tell us. Okay. Now, here I'm lining up. It's not giving much for voice feedback. That's very unfortunate. So you will have to guess about where it is. And you can hear there, it's starting to hover, meaning it's found something. So you want to hold still there. We'll take a picture. Take picture. Processing. This is. Right now what it's doing is it's brought us back into an edit mode, just like when I found the beef bullion or the letter. So I'm going to swipe right and it's going to try reading it to me. So first line, this is. Capital print. Capital print. This is small print. So perfect. It's found my lines of text beautifully. The first line was. Uh, capital letters in print, it was block lettering. And the second line was lowercase print. So that's very exciting that we can read bits of handwriting if they're spaced out correctly, if they're somewhat on a level plane, not like my handwriting much, but uh, cursive is still very much out of the ballpark because it's all contiguous. The engine has a tough time distinguishing what it says exactly. So right now, Handwriting is very exciting because we can read letters. We can practice handwriting if we wanted to. We could practice H, H, H on a piece of paper and we could check if it was correct. And if we need to do our handwriting, we wanna make sure if we're high partial that we have adequate light. And luckily one of the features here is a light sensor. Awesome, and that is true. A light sensor, you would think, hey, why does this app need a light sensor? Well, a lot of us, partials and, and blinds, have trouble seeing light or understanding, hey, how much light's in the room? And this app works beautifully at telling you, hey, there's a little bit of light in this room, so it's pitch dark, or whoa, there is way too much light in this room. Maybe it's time to tone it down a little bit. So let's move over to our light channel. channel. Adjusted color, preview, brown, handwriting, preview, light. So, I don't know if you can hear that tone. It's very dim. It, I don't know, I'm gonna put it closer to my... Do so you hear a very low pitch? Mm. If I were to move my finger from the camera, you'll hear a tiny increase. Now I'm pointing the camera at my computer screen, which is obviously lighted. So the further I pull my phone away, and I don't know if you can tell this over Zoom, the further I pull my phone away, because my room is dark right now, it's getting dimmer and dimmer and the pitch becomes lower and lower. If I bring it closer to my computer, that's a nice mid-level mid pitch. That means, hey, there's all right lighting in here. It's not too dark, it's not too bright. If I point the And if the, you move your phone really slowly, you can make a song out of it. But let's turn my lights on in my bedroom. So whoop, lights are on. So the lights are on now. Oh, I apologize. The lights are on now. So I'm going to point the camera upwards. And there you go. That's a very high pitch. And the closer I get to the light, the higher the pitch. So that's really cool. The higher the pitch, the more light. The less pitch, 
or the lower the pitch, the darker and bleaker the place is. Really useful for taking pictures, although the phone will turn on the, the flashlight by default when seeing AI is on. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty cool. So you don't have to worry too much about light, but for example, for that handwriting preview, you still need to worry about the light because lighting does affect handwriting very much so. One more thing I wanna show you real quick is a few things, actually a few more things that I wanna show you, but please get your questions in and Dan jump in if there are questions in raised hands, of course, Alt Y, Command Y to raise hands, Alt H and Command H to post questions. But one thing you can see here at the top left, so for example, let's go to products. At the top left here of product or of any channel, you'll see menu. To the right of that, quick help. you'll see quick help. If you tap on quick help, you'll see a little quick help blurb about how to properly use your channel. Hold the camera over a barcode to hear the product name. CNA will guide you with the camera placement until a barcode is detected. Bullet. List. Move the phone over the product until you hear beeps that indicate a barcode is nearby. Start. Bullet. The faster the beeps, the closer you are to the barcode. So there you go. The Each over. channel has a quick help function to the right of the menu. And with this, you'll be able to get a little step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do the particular function that you're trying to carry out. Now, one more thing I wanna show you is the settings. There are a few settings here that are pretty cool for maximizing productivity while simultaneously enhancing efficiency with your time. So let's go to settings. We did that by going to menu, then settings. Now, let's swipe. You can, you can change your currency here if you wish, but you can also do this from within the currency menu. So it's a little superfluous, but it's there. Speech, heading. See if I want to configure haptic touch, configure currency. Here it is. Configure, configure Siri, shortcuts. Siri shortcuts. Of course, this means that with Siri shortcuts, you can uh, you can streamline certain actions. So let's open this up. Configure Siri Select shortcuts. Which you wish to use with Siri. Recognize your text. Cancel. So okay. for example, I'll activate recognize short text. I'll tap on that. Add to Siri. Heading. Add a custom phrase Siri can use to tell CNAI to run this shortcut. Add a custom phrase that Siri can tell this program to run the shortcut. When I say recognize short text, text feed, clear text, do, head, recognize short text, add to, add to Siri. So Button. add it to Siri. Selected. Rec recognize handwriting. And of course, you can do this for all the different channels. Rec recognize C Selected. Recognize currency. So let me close the app. App switcher. I already have the currency one. As you know, the currency is lower in the channels. You have to do a little bit of maneuvering to get the currency. But let's uh, let's use Siri. Identify currency. Now. Listen. Listen. Uh, Amazon Alexa. Hold on. Identify currency. Oh, I'm sorry, it's rec okay. recognized currency. There we go. And now we've opened Seeing AI with focus. Quick help, Rec chan channel, adjustable. Rec channel, currency. Currency. Adjustable. Recognizing you, yes. So again, you can activate all these uh, shortcuts. Just make sure to uh, say the proper phraseology. In this case, it would be recognized currency. It will open the app and automatically put you into the uh, currency channel or whatever respective channel you're trying to locate with shortcuts. Again, that that uh, streamlines productivity and doesn't require you to engage in several unnecessary superfluous swipes and gestures with the app. That's about a good, very small demonstration of what this app can do in all the different applications you use it for. If anyone else has anything to add, I think don't, don't uh, ask questions if you wish, but uh, Bailey, doesn't this uh, app have integration in Twitter with the photos? And yes, it does. Um, this is something I haven't explored very much. I'm not a huge Twitter guy myself. Um, what, what you can do, I, I do know that it is very streamlined and there's actual just 
quick uh, shortcut links right in photos. Again, it's something I haven't messed with very much personally, but um, Facebook, which is something I do use, uh, um, if their inbuilt uh, AI recognition isn't quite as good as you want it to be, you can save the photo to your camera roll and do it as I just showed you. Um, Twitter has made it a little bit easier and more streamlined to do, but you can do that. Uh, you can do that from basically anywhere. Um, save the photo or and um, from messages from anything and just go through your camera roll that way uh, to sort of get get a good or better uh, representation description uh, analysis of what the photo is. And for example, at another professional application for seeing AI is when I used to be in the uh, Business Enterprise of Texas program, I had to identify tons and tons of different products to stuff in vending machines. I would use the product scanner to say, hey, is this Coke, Dr. Pepper, Big Red? What are these, salted peanuts? Are these, uh, are these uh, Pepperidge Farm cookies or are they famous Amos? What is what are these chips? Lace? Are they truffles? So it's a great way to just again, it's not as efficient as hiring someone to tell you that's what this is, but it will save you money. It will save you money. You won't be able to or if you're just in your storage room, uh, in your storage unit, sorting inventory, it's a way to do it on your own. Another way I use it is at at work. Uh, whenever we print off documents that needed to be signed. I would use short text to figure out, hey, is this something that the client needs to sign or is this something that doesn't need a signature on? So I would point my phone at the piece of paper to find out, hey, what this is. So again, this can be applied around your house or at your workplace. I mean, it's awesome. It's really cool. And uh, that's, that's a really strong presentation of the app, I think. In a very, uh, it, oh, one more thing. It also has a color previewer. Reason I uh, omitted this from the presentation was that the color preview is not the most accurate because color is so dependent on things like light, shading, uh, and just your background has a huge impact on it, the color of the background or foreground. So it's kind of inaccurate. It's not something I would rely on to dress myself with. I still think the more uh, antiquated forms of color sorting with uh, are still more superior. Something like a pen friend would be uh, better for color arrangement with clothes. But with that said, are there any questions or raised hands, Dan? No, sir. Not seeing any questions, not seeing any hands. If I could add something real quick. Please. Keep in mind that seeing AI is just that, it's AI, artificial intelligence. It's no different than a uh, Google Assistant, uh, if you have a Samsung phone, uh, Bixby, Siri, or my phone just went off for Siri and it's a Samsung phone, go figure. <laughs> um, or if you have the Echo, I don't wanna say the A lady's name, but, uh, even all of us have had experiences where we've asked these various uh, assistants, AIs, whatnot, questions, and we're like, what on earth did that just say? Why did it say that? This is the exact same thing. It is, it's always a work in progress. So just be patient, keep trying, keep hanging in there. And, uh, and, and you know, it will, uh, uh, it'll, it'll definitely be coming around. Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, one thing I want to uh, I want to absolutely stress is this is unfortunately at the moment only available on iPhone, but this is the one the first part of a two part series in two weeks folks for anyone who uses Android. I know there's a growing market of visually impaired Android users. There are apps out there. Dan is an expert. It's an expert in becoming quickly an expert on various apps like Google Lens and Lookout. Those will be on the next presentation in two weeks. So if you know people who use Android, if you have an Android, stand to or stay tuned for that one. But for the meanwhile, while we wait for any raise their last minute questions, I do want to thank you all so very much for joining us today. I also want to thank Dr. Laura Miller and Northwest Eye Care for bringing her clientele 
and just sticking with us throughout the duration of these presentations. Also wanna to thank to everyone listening to us in the future, the link is in the handouts or ask for it and we will send it to you. Of course, you can contact us at any time, continue the conversations after the webinars, during or before at either dan.hart at austinlighthouse.org or eric.cifuentes, S-I-F-U-E-N-T-E-S at austinlighthouse.org. Email us your comments, your questions, about tech, about not tech, anything blindness, uh, blindness related, or even suggestions for future webinars. Suggestions are so appreciated because we try to build these around what your everyday blind Joe or Josephine would uh, use or can use to enhance their lives. So again, email us and we'll be more than happy to respond to you. We'd like to thank everyone for joining us in the future on the webinar. You are important too. Thank you so much for checking us out. Spread the word. We hope to get out to as many people as possible. One more check for hands and questions. <clears throat> I thought I saw a hand up. I'm not seeing it up anymore and I'm not seeing any Five. questions. No hands and no questions. No, wait. Hang on. Hold on a second. There is a hand. Hang on. Awesome. See who that is. Okay, I uh, got a question from uh, Ned here. Ready? Go ahead and, uh, unmute there, Ned, and good to go. Right, Ned. Yes. Can you hear me? Yep. You are audible. <laughs> yes. This is Ned. Uh, during the program, one of the presenters uh, used his smart speaker to find his uh, uh, phone. How did that happen? How did you do that? Oh, I did that. I was scrambling too. So I couldn't find my phone. And the uh, A lady, the uh, Echo, Amazon Echo has yeah. a feature integrated, a skill called find my phone. You can activate that with the uh, Amazon Alexa app, or uh, I believe you can just tell your Echo device, Echo, find my uh, phone or enable, enable find my phone. It's one of those two ways. Of course, you'll have to give them your phone number. But when you uh, when you finally get that set up, you just say, hey, lady, find my phone, and she'll ring you. And then, boom, you found your phone. <laughs> so I start off by saying to the device, find my phone. Yes, or enable find my phone. I'm sorry, what is that again I say? You say enable find my phone. OK, enable find my phone. OK, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> That's a really cool feature as well. I mean, it, it just shows you how AI has long since passed the whole, hey, how are you, robot? I'm great. Now it's just integrated casually into everyday life, and we didn't even know it. So once again, thank you to everybody for joining us. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful night. We will see you in two weeks. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs> Please, 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 please.